Hello friends. Welcome to Wise Monkeys. Today we will talk about what are projects and how we should be going about making our projects at the undergraduate level. One of the things which is a very common question which I get always is what is a project and why should I be doing one? A project is something which has not been done before. See, in any situation, whenever we make a project, what we are doing is trying to uncover something new, which has not been done before. If we say manufacturing, manufacturing is something where we do things again and again, repetitively, making multiple products of the same thing. Whereas when we make a building or a bridge, we say it's a project under construction because no matter how many bridges we build or buildings we construct, there are always a new challenge with every building. Similarly, in a software project, when we make a project, no matter how many times the same topic has been done before, every project comes up with new challenges and needs better solutions. And therefore, software project is always a learning experience for the person who is involved in making that project. Many students feel, why do I have to do a project? And the answer is very simple. If you really look at it, every university in the world, no matter which program you are studying for, the students end up doing a project in the final year. This is not to prove that you can build something but to showcase what you have already learned. It is important that when you make a project, you use whatever skills you have gained over the last three or four years of your undergraduate program and implement those in the area of your choice. This gives you for the very first time an opportunity to start and build something out of your own mind from your own likes. It does not have to be anything which your teacher prescribes because a project has no syllabus and therefore it is the great opportunity for every student to showcase their talent. Also, in every interview, it's the most important topic of discussion that what project have you worked on and why you have done so. This gives a great opportunity for the interviewer to look into the mind of the interviewee and understand whether that person is suitable for the job in that company. Life project is a project which you do for a company or an organization which has a real world problem. Such a, pro such a project allows you to work with a real world entity whether it's a company, organization, an NGO or a government department allowing you to understand the details of their problem and to come up with a solution which will actually be used in real life. Compared to this, when you work for a project which is a dummy or a prototype, you get to choose the problem. Also, you are able to decide the constraints of the problems yourself. Both have their pros and cons. With a live project, you will be able to work under a real life situation gain knowledge about a real domain and you will be then able to say that this project is being implemented even after you've completed your program. On the other hand, with a project which is a prototype, you will be able to explore areas which might not be possible to explore in a live project because in a live project you are under the constraints of the company whereas in a dummy or a prototype you have the freedom to explore a topic or an area which has never been done before. Every student when they start off a project does not know whether the project is going to be feasible. Feasibility is on multiple criteria. First criteria is the time. You need to decide the project which you are doing is feasible in the amount of time available to you because you are doing this project for an examination which you know is fixed at a particular time or a day and hence you need to plan very well on the amount of time you will be able to spend on that project. This may vary at the time whether it's a semester based project or a year long project. Once you have identified your problem, 
you need to identify how many man hours will be required to solve that problem. Now, when you are doing this for the very first time, it's not as easy as it seems. People generally tend to either overestimate or underestimate the time required for doing a project. It is important to take the guidance from guides to identify whether this problem is going to be feasible in the amount of time you have. Please understand, you are not students and not working professionals who will be working on the project 9 to 5. You will have limited time because you also have to study other subjects. People always have this dilemma once the topic is decided that where should we start. A good point to start a project is to identify the system requirements. This, however, does not mean that you necessarily follow the waterfall model. Because many of the times when you're doing a first project, it is important to learn the process as we go along because you won't have the time to come back and change anything if you follow a strict waterfall model. Therefore, I always recommend my students to do some requirements, identify and prioritize those requirements and then try to build a core functionality of those requirements in the least amount of time possible. Such a prototype may or may not be used in the final project but will allow you to understand the workings and the requirements of the project in the least amount of time. The importance of a guide is felt by the student sometimes towards the end of the project. Actually, it's the reverse. The students need to know that the guide is along with them in the process of making the project. He is not a bystander and an observer. He is actually a very, very important cog in the wheel. You need to use your guide very, very intelligently. It is the guide who has more experience in such projects. And because this is your first project, you need to utilize this experience at every step and every opportunity which is available to you. If you are confused about a topic, it's the first thing you will want to talk to your guide about. Because if you talk to your friends, they are as new to the concept as you are. Talking to seniors helps but may not be always the correct approach because they will give you responses with their limited experience. A guide on the other hand will have years of guiding students experiences and therefore will be able to tell you what your solution should be knowing the best solution for the problem. Sometimes your interest and your guide's interest do not match. Say for example, if your guide is somebody who is very good at a programming language such as Java and you want to do a project which is in embedded systems and you don't have an opportunity to change your guide. In such a scenario, it's important to then convince your guide that you will be able to do the project in embedded system. However, you need to have the guidance. Even though the student might be doing the project for the first time in another area, the guide has valuable experience to guide the student no matter what the technology. It shouldn't be a case where the student feels because it's an area which the guide has less expertise in that he is not good enough. In fact, even with his limited experience in that area, the guide will still have more understanding than the student in that particular topic. Documentation A topic which not only students but even most companies face a problem with. Why is documentation so important? Documentation is nothing but jotting down the steps or the way you reach to the solution. It's not something which you do at the end of the project once the project is ready. It's actually the process of getting to that solution which is important to be documented. So right from the process of identification of the topic to identification of your requirements, prototyping, designing, development, testing, everything needs to be documented. Think of it as a diary which you write every day and before going to bed. It's something which you need to do every day while you are doing the project, not something which is done at the end.
Project presentation gives butterflies to every student. During the project presentation, you need to identify that you have a very short amount of time to talk about something which has taken weeks or months or even a year to complete. Please identify what is the USP of your project and focus on that the very first thing when you present. Do not wait to go in a sequence because it may happen that you may not have the enough time to actually reach to the most critical or the most important part of your project. Once you have dealt with that, then you may give time to the examiner to ask you questions because if you don't allow that, you will not know if you have completed your project successfully.